Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm pleased to uh, be here with uh, Sri Srinivasan from the Dynamics AX R&D team. Sri, thanks for being here. Thanks, Ray. We're going to be talking in this session about performance uh, in AX 2012. But before we get started, Sri, maybe you can give our, our viewers and our listeners a little bit of background about you, your experience, and what you do on the AX team. Sure. Um, thanks, Guy. Um, I'm an architect in the AX R&D organization. Uh, with core focus on performance and scale and a whole, bo whole bunch of other architectural areas. And I've been uh, around the ERP world quite a bit before that, big ERP, um, working on perf scale for them before I decided to come on over to Microsoft. And how long have you been on the team for in Microsoft? I've been uh, through three releases now uh, the of one. the AX product, and it's about six years wow. this, this month. That's great. So we're going to dig right in and mm -hmm. talk about performance and scalability. It's, it's a huge issue. It's one you guys have put a lot of effort, a lot mm -hmm. of man hours into and doing in this release. Talk a little bit about it for people who are both existing customers today on older versions, as sure. well as people who may be taking a look at AX for the first time. Okay. So it's no longer a huge issue. It's a huge feature. <laughs> so it's a benefit true. of the product now. <laughs> so let's talk about um, roadmap and where we were and where we came to. So we were... Um, our first release was in June 2006. We released AX4 at that time. We focused on certain portions of database scale. Um, and then we focused on the application server tier in AX 2009, which was shipped in June 2008. Um, 2012 marks a landmark release for us. Um, and I could talk through some of the scale tenets. Uh, yeah. It would be better on the whiteboard. Yeah, that's great. Let's use the whiteboard. Okay. To kind of so show let's the use the whiteboard. So uh, in any architecture, you've got the database at the lowest end of the tier, and then you got a set of application servers, in this case, the AOS and the IS uh, server. And we have a, a number of client forms, uh, rich clients, portals, integration clients, that help us scale. Um, in AX2012, what we did is we focused on our energies on the application server and um, taking our unmanaged X++ language and helping it run on .NET. So, X++ is now a managed language, and with a managed language, we get speed. So we've clocked X++ to be 20 times faster in certain cases. It can be as much as two times faster to 20 times faster in AX2012. Versus um, the previous versions. Versus the previous versions. And there are a couple of tenets to scale. Um, databases always need to scale up. Application servers need to scale up and scale out. In June 2006, we realized that chip makers were focused more on uh, increasing the number of cores on a die um, rather than processor speed. So which in turn means you now hear about quad-core, hex-core, octa-core so, uh, processors. So we've done a ton of work to take that on. So as box makers make bigger processors, you get those inherent benefits right away. Um, so the application server can support like a 12-core processor, two or three of them. It's capable of running its own cache store, so you get a lot of benefits from a caching standpoint. Um, and obviously, X++ running as a managed language provides a lot of speed. Mm -hmm. SQL Server, our great database, provides the ability for things like compression. So you can take a terabyte database, what would be a terabyte database on either SQL Server or a competitive database, compress it down, and run against a compressed database. Mm -hmm. So it's like taking a terabyte database and using only 300 gig of storage. So you, your storage cost goes down. And, that, and it's got huge implications when you think about some of our customers, like Absolutely. retailers, for instance, analyzing all of this data that they Absolutely. have to go through. Yeah. So whenever you do a lot of database operations and microtransactions in retail type situations or in e-commerce type situations, your transaction volume goes up. When your transaction volume goes up, and in this day and uh, age of connected systems analytics, it's important to store all that information mm -hmm. and store that efficiently. So we've done a lot of work in terms of space optimization. And all up, the scalability is database scale, the .NET enablement, virtualization. Virtualization technologies have come on to four. So application servers can be virtualized. All the client stuff can be virtualized. The database can run virtual. Mm -hmm. So your whole ecosystem, in a sense, can be run off virtualized environments. And what is that? Talk about that a little bit more. Dig into that in terms of what that means for customers in terms of deployment in terms of the cost, um, in terms of how they implement the mm -hmm. system? Because I think that's pretty significant. Absolutely. It's, um, on the Windows platform, it's, it's very significant in terms of cost. Um, because what happens is box, uh, boxes become cheaper every two years by way of not the price point dropping, but 
in terms of capability model, you can process nearly two to three times as much as you did for the same server two years back. Mm. Um, so we have a capability model at the same cost to do more in this, in this release. And that comes by way of some benchmarks, some exciting benchmarks that we might be sharing with you today. Um, AX2009, uh, our prior version, we did about 300,000 lines an hour. We could scale higher. Some of our customers have. But this release, we're, we're about going to, un, um, we're going to unravel a benchmark that's doing about four to five million lines an hour, which is about an eight to 10 times scale difference. That's and amazing. There isn't many ERP deployments that have that kind of a volume. So we're really unveiling AX2009, AX2012 for the, for the newer ecosystem. And so that, that speed, how does that, how does that kind of manifest itself in terms of what our customers are able to do with the product ultimately? I mean, speed for in of itself, everyone knows faster mm -hmm. is better in these things, but how does that, how does that translate into a reduced cost or d deployment time or you know, usability of the system? So it, it helps a lot with usability of the system and the ability for you to do what you would have done in a batch type environment now online. Mm. And hence, you know, faster, more connected business processes which our competition only can aspire for. I, I think one of the things that's significant is is uh, all of this functionality, and at the same time, all of the performance at the same time. You, you, sometimes you, you tend to think of those things as being paradoxical. You know, you have all the, the rich industry functionality in a single application footprint mm -hmm. that doesn't inherently equate itself with fast or speedy or scalable. And in, in this case, it sounds like you guys have kind of been able to marry those two together. Absolutely, and I'm going to kind of talk about one of our internal secrets. Um, our, our head of development usually turns around and says every release, I don't care how many lines of code you add, um, the all-up cost of the code in terms of runtime execution has to be lower than the last release. So what we do is we look for infrastructure optimizations of the sort I discussed with you, mm -hmm. which is X++ speeding up. So this 10 lines of X++ would have run for, say, a factor of N in the prior version. Mm -hmm. Now we run 100 lines of X++ for the same factor of N. And that's how we get performance benefits. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you look at our code base, our code base is nearly multiplied by a factor of three, this release, mm -hmm. and transactions are faster. So our secret sauce is looking at the infrastructure, looking, keeping up with the ever-changing technological advancements that the Microsoft technology stack brings to fore. Mm -hmm. And we are a flexible enough environment where we can take on new uh, technologies like App Fabric that came with Visual Studio mm -hmm. um, and plug it into our framework for instant benefits to our customer. And that's got huge, huge implications in terms of how agile you can be as a customer Absolutely. in terms of how you deploy the product yeah. to for such a large, mm -hmm. you know, global implementation for a lot of our customers, right? Absolutely, as a framework too. Yeah, as a framework too. Yeah. So as you've, uh, you know, as we've gone through the the, uh, the TAP uh, program and the technical adoption program and the beta and so forth with our early adopters and customers, what's the feedback been in terms of the performance? I can only imagine um, some of the eyes popping that they've seen versus prior mm -hmm. versions. Uh, without a doubt. Um, they're, they're surprised that um, we didn't ask them to go buy new hardware, uh, in a sense, to run transactions mm -hmm. through. Um, because, you know, there's kind of a tacit expectation, more features means more hardware. Mm -hmm. And this is one of one of our, uh, I would say this is the second release where we've done this. So uh, we want to keep up that consistency level of, you know, our customers expecting us to run with the same amount of hardware yeah, as before. Exactly. Well, I know if, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, the customers that I've spent time with, they're really impressed by the, the performance of this release. And that's going to have huge implications for the value that people get in the marketplace. So thanks mm -hmm. for spending some time with us today. Thanks, Guy. Thanks. Thank you.